Howdy y'all, my name is Price, and welcome back to some more Stardew Valley! Let's see, how are the spirits feeling? They're neutral today. Let's go see the damage. How many of my crops did I lose? Oh, doesn't look like we lost any. It looks like they're just all going to be stunted today. Well, that's great. That works for me. That's fine. Got a couple of things grown. Oh, these ones, are they're through because they had the sprinkler. Look at that. Okay, well our copper can is ready to go. We've got a couple hours before we can go do anything about that. Let me, we're gonna save one parsnip and one cauliflower for our, uh, oh, and one green bean for the um, foraging, or not the foraging, but the crops uh, bundle. We need a potato, which I hopefully have. Let's see, what are you? Tulip, what are you? Cauliflower, what are you? Potatoes, cool. Um, I love that thing. Is the, are these all tulips? Awesome, we're gonna be using those um, as gifts for Emily, or not Emily, for Sophia. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, we're just gonna bust some stuff. Um, how y'all doing? Hope you're uh, having a good day. Uh, I'm doing pretty well. I just recorded the last episode of this. If you missed that, you might want to go check it out because as we get into psych talks for today, um, we're going to be uh, talking about personality later, which is heavily influenced by temperament, which is what we discussed last time. Now, um, for those of y'all who might be new to the channel, if you're out there, somebody is popping in. Uh, hello, my name is Price. Um, I like to talk about psychology while I'm doing... Uh, my day-to-day -day stuff, watering plants, um, chopping down trees, all that kind of stuff, because uh, I actually have a master's in psychology. I actually spent um, <laughs> 12 years in school um, studying psychology. I got my bachelor's and got a master's. I was actually working on my PhD for a while. If you go back into some of my earlier videos, you'll hear me talking about that experience. Um, and I did not finish my PhD, but I got what is called ABD, which basically means all but dissertation, which means I completed all of the necessary schoolwork. I took every class I was supposed to. Um, I you know, got all the book learning in. Um, and I even did write my dissertation. I, um, def or I uh, proposed my dissertation research, which um, that was a lot of work. And then essentially some things fell through with what I was supposed to study. I was going to have to write a whole new dissertation. And by that time I was doing stump full time. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to focus on stumped and I'm okay with that. I learned a ton um, from uh, my studies. I think it helped tremendously with how I understand people in the world. So I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, but you know, I can't claim myself to be a doctor. Uh, so, because of that, I have a lot of knowledge of psychology. I have um, uh, taught psychology at many levels uh, and numerous classes. My specialty being human development and uh, human perception and sensation. So, because of that, I talk a lot about human development related topics here. People have questions about um, development a lot. It's a very interesting topic, I know, for a lot of people. It's very interesting for me, for sure. Um, Whoa, I just looked out of the thing. We okay? Still recording. Didn't mess up my screen. If the screen is now suddenly off, I apologize. Like, if it's tilted a little bit to the left or something. Um, okay, let me go put away some of this stuff. We're gonna run and go get our watering can. We'll come back and water things and then probably fish for a little bit. Um, so, psychology-related stuff for today because of our, um, uh, my little spiel over with, you know? I wouldn't say 100% be like, oh, Price is the foremost expert on psychology. I would always say, if you're interested in this stuff, go read more about it. Look in peer-reviewed journals, look in scientific, um, uh, in, in places where science is respected and utilized, I'll say. There are a lot of pop psychology books out there that essentially are, um, stretching the truth or even completely fabricating it in order to sell you something, sell you some kind of um, lifestyle or sell you some kind of, you know, some some view of the world that might be skewed. So I would always say be cautious when reading like just a random book about psychology, when reading a random article about psychology um, in that, you know, it could be it could be a little off. It could be interpreted wrong or it could be just entirely fabricated. So always look into where your information is coming from. All right. Got our copper watering can. That's going to help now. I'm so glad we didn't lose any plants. I know you can if they're not watered for a while. Um, but uh, glad we got a lucky day. 
Um, so, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some water, and we're gonna go water our plants. Um, I should get another gift for Sophia. Oh, actually, it is the last day to do so, and I only- I got none. Oh, no, it's the new- it's the first of the week. It's the new week. Um, so, uh, personality is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, it's- what's interesting, there's a lot of personality tests out there. Uh, a lot of y'all have probably taken personality tests. Um, and the first thing I will say is that there are a lot of different personality tests. They all have very, uh, different levels of what are, you know, called validity and reliability. Basically, how well do they measure the thing that they say that they're, um, uh, studying? Uh, that's the validity part. Is it a valid measure of what it's saying it's studying? And reliability being how consistently does it, um measure those things um, when you study them, right? And so that's more about your um, your study methods, right? So even if something is a valid marker of um, personality, say, a personality trait, if you can't reliably get that information every time, like you don't have a good measure for it, then it doesn't matter how good of a model you have, if that makes sense. Um, so... Um, a lot of y'all maybe are familiar with the Myers-Briggs personality test. Uh, as far as the field of psychology is concerned, it's a very interesting um, personality test, but ultimately it doesn't have a lot of predictability. It doesn't really allow you to predict a lot about the person um, going forward into the future, right? So a lot of the things that we look at with psychology are like how um, beneficial is this thing to study? Like, is it worth spending our time essentially studying this? Or does it not help us understand anything about the person? So Myers-Briggs, there's not a lot of research on it to show that it does a better job of studying um, personality than uh, other methods um, that are used that have high predictability. So the one that is the most used in psychology for future prediction, like how well are you gonna do at your job? What kind of issues are you gonna run into as an adult? Um, is the uh, big five or the ocean um, model. Uh, the reason it's called ocean is it's an acronym for the big five components. Um, so that helps you remember it a little bit if you're always trying to be like, what does, what does, what are the big five again? What is that thing? Um, so the, uh, what ocean stands for, um, O is for openness. Um, C is for conscientiousness. E is for, oh, I'm, I'm already, I'm already going to have to look it up. I know, uh, let's see. Do, 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 give me a second. Do, 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 do. Looking up things. Ah, extroversion, of course. Extroversion versus introversion, um, which a lot of y'all are aware of. Um, the A is agreeableness, and the N is neuroticism. So these different measures are just measures of, you know, you can take a test on these, um, and they have different components to them in terms of, like, what it is that um, they are studying and how um, that kind of reflects you as a person. Um, so let's go ahead and like break down what those actually are. So like I said, we're not going to be talking about Myers-Briggs or anything. You know, a lot of y'all might know you're an ENTJ or, a, you know, uh, something like that, right? Um, that's, you know, interesting stuff, but that's not what we're going to talk about because, again, like I said, doesn't have a lot of predictability. Um, beyond what it what the big five has like basically the myers-briggs when you use it as for predictability it um essentially shows the big five like you know you'll be like oh these two measures are actually measuring agreeableness or these two measures are measuring extroversion or whatever and so having it split doesn't really help in any way if that makes sense so it's not that they don't predict anything it's just that that prediction can be just as easily explained by the big five and in psychology and in research we always go for whatever is the simplest route and especially the most reliable route which seems to be the big five um so um let's go ahead and start with that the o stands for openness so openness to new experiences um 
Some people can be very excited about new experiences. They can like to approach new things, new ideas. They're very open to changes, um, and they uh, will welcome that stuff. Um, so these people like to, you know, travel, explore. They love to go try new foods, try new activities, you know, all kinds of very active things in the world. All right, we're starting to feel exhausted. Let's go ahead and walk away, and we'll watch as our energy comes back. Um, versus people who are a little more cautious, a little more standoffish to new things, who avoid kind of uh, newer things, um, you know, for whatever reasons. Not ne these, these aren't, you shouldn't view them as positive or negative on either side. They're just like different views and approaches to um, life. And how you respond to, wow, it's already 6.50 p.m. Um, how you respond to external stimuli, to environmental stimuli, um, much like temperament. Um, so, uh, conscientiousness is, uh, the C is about essentially like, are you very disciplined? Are you very organized? Do you do things in a very, um, efficient and rigid <clears throat> and rigid way? Excuse me. I'm always drinking coffee while I do this. And then I talk a bunch and then I'm like, why is my throat doing that? Um, so, you know, it's that rigidity and discipline versus a more flexible, open approach, but also maybe a sort of messier approach, right? Like you might not have it all um, uh, organized. You might often be, you know, disorganized, having trouble um, doing things on time or whatever. Um, there we go. I got your ax. Thank you so much. Um, did I get... Give someone a gift. Oh, I will do that. I already have, actually. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and head home. Okay. So, um, so yeah. That's, uh, that's conscientiousness. Essentially, like, how organized and, you know, how disciplined are you? Um, and how open are you to flexibility? Um, so, someone who is more rigid and disciplined is likely less interested in flexibility. Um, if that makes sense. Um... Okay, so then the E, a lot of y'all are familiar with this, probably all of you are familiar with this, extroversion versus introversion. It's basically extroverts, how much are you going to be outgoing in order to meet other people, in order to, you know, kind of spend time in social situations. Um, and then um, conversely, uh, you have introversion, which is more about being kind of reserved, uh, not really approaching social situations energetically, often being kind of drained by social situations or anxious around social situations. Um, so, you know, you're more reserved, more keeping to yourself often or just, you know, with your few close trusted people. Um, and so, you know, that, um, that's introversion, essentially. Then we move on to the uh, A, agreeableness. So agreeableness is kind of like how... Oh, wrong direction. Um, how uh, compassionate you are, how friendly you are to others. Are you someone who is very other focused and tries to help others? Or are you a little more focused um, on yourself? Are you more like critical of other people? Um, but, you know, sometimes this is also associated with um, pragmatism and rationality, right? You're not... Um, necessarily swayed by your emotions, if you think of it that way. Um, so it's like, do you take a more uh, grounded approach versus do you take maybe a more like um, uh, uh, sort of more sociable, but more maybe, um, I guess, less, less grounded, a little more kind of uh, up in the air. Um, so yeah, that's agreeableness. And then finally, neuroticism. And neuroticism is sort of like how um, nervous, anxious, um, how sensitive you are. Basically, you know, are you a um, person who responds to change in new things as uh, being anxious or, you know, um, uh, be, you know, like nervous, like in anticipation of things, whatever, um, versus... Um, being more like resilient to things and more confident in your um, uh, in your your choices and in the world and going out and doing things. Um, uh, basically, it, this is very similar to like anxious versus not 
uh, essentially, which, you know, there are differences uh, to a lot of people. Uh, it can also be, though, neuroticism is also often focused on a sort of um, meticulous uh, approach to things. Um, so, like, if you are neurotic, high neuroticism, then you're likely to um, be a little more focused on the details, a little more cautious about things, a little more kind of like getting down to the nitty gritty um, and making sure that things are, you know, um, fitting what you need to feel appropriate, whereas someone who is more resilient or confident, they might not take that level of intricacy into play. Ooh! Are we getting a big cauliflower? Whenever this fairy comes along, awesome things happen. Or she's just gonna like make something grow real fast. I'm hoping we get a big one. Please give me a big one. Please give me a big one from this. These fairies are awesome. Um, okay, look at her go! Really hoping for that one. Really hoping for that one. Okay. So, how does this personality then get, you know, influenced by or played into with genetics, right? Well, as we talked about last time, temperament is genetic, right? You're born with your temperament. You know, it's not influenced by your parenting because... Um, we see it in infants, like as soon as you can measure it, um, when an infant is, you know, as I like to call them, a little larva, they're still like learning how to be a person, like learning how to use their body. Um, at that point, parenting doesn't have a huge impact on a child's responses to the environment, right? Pretty much it's about, are you a responsive parent or are you not? And that affects how much they will cry or how much they won't, but that really doesn't influence their general approach to everything. So, because this happens at a genetic and neuro, uh, neurological level, I almost said neurotic level. Um, okay, those all grew in. Oh, okay, maybe that's what she did. She just grew them in fast. Um, okay. Thank you, Granny Evelyn. Uh, let's grab all of these tulips. Heck yeah, we are going to... Oh, we're not even going to be able to pick them all up, will we? Only the ones that we've already got. Okay, so I'm gonna need to make another chest here, I think. So I'm gonna put these tulips away real fast, as many of them as I can. Gonna make a chest, we're gonna make that our flower chest. And I do need to move that chest, y'all have let me know, it's something I'm gonna have to do. I think I have to do it just by um, the time I upgrade. So we're gonna start with putting them out here. I always find it easier when they're like, right in your face. This is gonna be the flower chest. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we have the temperament aspect, right? We've, that we've already talked about where uh, a child essentially has this like base level of response to new stimulus in the environment. Um, oh, we got another one of these. We got our potatoes, so we can go and... Um, yeah, can't pick that up. So we can go do that uh, bundle, which will be nice. Uh, oh, we got a gold star bean, but I don't need that. I actually don't need that. Um, do I pick up these cauliflowers or do I wait on them? Y'all let me know that if I wait, they might turn into a big one. Um, so we might wait for a little while. I don't need them right away. I don't necessarily need the money right away. Um, we could fish for money, you know. Uh, let's put these guys away, though. Doot, 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 doot. Uh, oh, put the potato away. Put the wood away. Grab that tulip. Okay. I'm going to want to take one tulip over to Sophia. Um, let's go ahead and do this. And we're going to hold on to most of these tulips. I'm going to put... I'm going to go sell the gold ones just because why actually no because gold actually matters the higher quality matters for gifts right does it let's see um gosh I have no idea produces dye oh that's neat to know um we might experiment with it and see if it matters um so I will actually give her a gold today and then maybe we give her uh, a regular one the next day and then we actually literally look at the points um, before and after because we can measure that by looking at our F1 menu. So we'll do the gold one today and we'll move on from there. Uh, okay, so um, where were we at? Temperament. Temperament, uh, we talked about how it's like about the base response that a uh, uh, an infant will have to the environment and how like that affects them from like a physiological level, right? Talked about like muscle tone and things like, do they have a lot of muscle tension or, or not? Um, that's, that's a base neurological response. Um, so 
with that in mind, you know, think about some of those big five um, traits that we just talked about not too, you know, a couple minutes ago. You have neuroticism, right? Which is sort of this um, intense, uh, potentially anxious response to stimuli, right? To the environment. That uh, highly correlates with um, whether or not you had that more um, uh, reserved and anxious response as an infant, right? When, you know, if they did that test on you that we talked about last time, where they are testing to see how you respond to the mobile, um, if you had that high tension um, response in which, you know, stress came on very quickly, you're going to be more likely to be neurotic. And, and when I say this, like, these are things that have been um, tested. You know, they had infants that were tested when they were young, and then they followed up with them as adults and did personality tests and saw these correlations um, at high, high level and that were at a statistically significant level. Um, let's go find Sophia. Do, 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 do. Because at the end of the day, statistical significance is the way that we can study um, psychological... Um, uh, issues, traits, components, uh, things that we study in psychology and in order to uh, determine accuracy, right? If it's statistically significant, that means it's more likely to be the case that these things are related than not related, right? If you compared it to a world in which they weren't related, it's clear that these are um, statistically significantly related. Like if they weren't related, oh, I haven't seen this one, then the, uh, uh, it would be you know, a 0.1% chance that they weren't related, that kind of thing. All right, let's talk to this guy. Ah, this is the new farmer. How you doing on this fine sunny day? You caught me in the middle of tending to my crops. I'm spreading some new Joja fertilizer on my crop field. I always use Joja fertilizer. It makes my crops grow stronger and healthier. Oh boy, you're a company man, huh? Say, you're just starting out on Piggly Farm. I got something for you to help you out. Oh, I think y'all told me about this. Is it gonna give me strawberry seeds? I have some strawberry seeds for you. Nice! Fairhaven Farm strawberries have a good reputation in Grampleton and Chestervale. I'll plant those today, because I have those other seeds that I need to plant. I'll be sending them your way once I have the time. These here crops got me occupied. You got yourself a nice day, Price. Go get some dirt on you. Well, thanks, bud! I guess it's because we talked to him a couple of times, huh? Well, neat. So I'm hoping that those show up today. If not, then we'll do it the next day. I think we'll have plenty of time for them to grow at least one harvest worth. Um, maybe we'll get to, that's just, you know, the nature of how it goes. And then like a lot of y'all suggested, I'll hold on to some strawberries, um, for the seed maker, um, later on. And then we can, um, use them in the greenhouse once we get that done. And the greenhouse is going to be the one I want to get done the most. I think we have to wait until like a full year has passed, or at least until we make it, um, through winter, maybe. Uh, let's actually look, um, community center. Spring crops, artisan, that's the stuff that we can do later, essentially. Animal, again, later. Fall crops, summer crops, and quality crops. So this is why I want to get parsnips in gold. So I may really want to buy some fertilizer and get some parsnips going. Um, oh, there you are, Sophia. Hello. Um, hello. Do you need something? All right. We are at next in 162. For me, thank you so much. And now we are at next in 106. So that was, hold on, I can do maths, me. 56 points, 56, I think it was 56 points. So I'll keep that in mind, 56. Um, how to win friends, boom. So if we give her a regular one tomorrow, that would be the most significant gap. So it'll be obvious, I think, um, which one it is. Uh, okay, so. Temperament being linked to personality, right? You can see that if you think about the things that we talked about with temperament and how it's sort of a response to novelty. Are you scared and, or concerned about novelty or are you more interested and do you approach that well, right? So similarly, the quote unquote easy kids, they are going to um, respond to the environment as um, being scary. Uh, or no, the, sorry, the easy kids are going to be more interested and find things novel. And so because of that, uh, or find things that are novel interesting. And so because of that, 
Let's go ahead and get 26, because I just realized I should probably buy some fertilizer if I can. Yeah, it's expensive too. Uh, five, perfect. Hopefully we will get five golds. Um, so they're going to be more open to new experiences, right? On that openness category, they're likely to be rated higher, right? Because they um, have that general temperament. A new thing doesn't cause them as much concern. Instead, it causes them curiosity and uh, interest and excitement. Um, so those things are heavily tied to your temperament. Same with extroversion and introversion, right? Um, now, conscientiousness and agreeableness, less so, but they are still uh, related. Oh, I didn't bring the rest of them. Didn't realize I needed, I didn't have them all here. Uh, let's go grab them all. Let's do the thing. Um, so, like I say, because of all that, you can see just inherently, right, when, when you think about it, it makes sense that they would be related, right? Um, but that's not enough, right? It's not enough to just be like, oh, it makes sense that they're related. Statistically, these things have been um, analyzed and they are related um, beyond, um, uh, they're related at a statistically significant level, which is sort of the, the benchmark for psychological uh, analysis. So we see that relation, right? And we know that temperament is genetic. It's something that you get directly from your parents because anything that shows up that's unrelated to environmental influence, that is um, temperament or that is genetic. That's just, that's kind of how that works, right? If it's not influenced by the environment, then it is influenced by your biology. Those are the two ways that things can be um, uh, uh, understood in humans. Um, and well, I guess in, in all... <laughs> Uh, creatures um, uh, that, that's how you can explain it right um, it can't really be explained in any other way than it's either genetic or environmental right there's not another aspect that can influence those things at least as far as we study them and understand them so um, with that uh, knowledge and seeing that that's genetic and everything uh, we see that um, as being um, related to your parents, right? You get them from your parents because your parents are what give you your genetics and um, these things are genetic and so it must be that you get them from your parents on a genetic level. Additionally, you are likely to be raised in a way that mirrors the personality traits of your parents, right? If your parents are neurotic, you're going to see them being neurotic and you yourself are going to become neurotic as well. Um, so there's sort of a chicken egg situation um, but ultimately you get them from your parents, regardless of if it's genetic or if it is, um, environmental. But uh, as I said before, we do see those genetic markers and they are st statistically significant. So between those two aspects, your personality is essentially highly, highly dictated by your um, biological parents. And so the big thing in that with the study is looking at... Um, uh, uh, studies of children who were adopted, who were separated um, from their parents, uh, twin studies where we see um, twins who maybe were separated um, for whatever reason, um, having similar personalities, even though they're parts of different families in terms of how they were raised. Um, so, so we see these things when we study it from that aspect. So it's like, oh, okay, even in the absence of being... Um, environmentally raised by these parents, we still see those high correlations. Um, because, you know, those are things that we can study. Ooh, we can go put that fertilizer on there too. Um, so we see this highly genetic um, relation between your personality, how you approach the world, new experiences, other people, etc., and your um, biological parents, um, which is really interesting, right? It's really interesting that, you know, you could think like, oh, I've got my personality, it's who I am, it's unique to me, and yet it is also highly influenced by your parents. Um, a lot of people might not like hearing that. You might be like, no, I'm so different from my parents. And that's because in many ways you, you are going to be different from your parents in terms of the um, interests that you have, the kind of approach to different subjects, because you're going to interpret 
different um, contexts or different um, concepts differently, right? So you might not be, you might be very open to things that your parents aren't open to, but that's because they don't cause you um, stress because of your connection to that specific thing, a subculture or a, um, a type of media or whatever, right? Uh, and so because of that, um, it might be like, oh no, there's no way. There's no way that I could be like my parents when it comes to my personality. But it's actually, it's, it's simpler than that, right? It comes down to like a neurological component of like, how does stimulus affect you, right? How sensitive are you to um, new things in your environment? Once you get worked up, how long does it take for you to calm down um, from those things? Um, when you know you're going to be in a new context, are you analyzing what it's going to be like when you're in that context? Or are you more excited about a new thing about to happen and not really concerned about um, the expectations, right? Those are the types of things that are more on a genetic level. It's just sort of that like um, inherent response to the environment, that low level, you might not even be uh, aware of it, um, internal response. And also, your parents might not be aware of it either, right? That's an important thing to remember is that um, your parents might not even recognize how similar you are. Uh, however, a lot of times they will recognize that, right? They'll see in you things that they saw in themselves. They'll be like, oh my gosh, I was like that when I was a kid. And oh man, I, I, I can empathize with you because of this, that, or the other. Um, and you might be like, you don't know it, mom or dad, which is a common thing um, in teenagers um, and for very obvious reasons or for very understood reasons having to do with emotional development. Um, but ultimately, those responses are incredibly similar because it's that genetic level response. Now, why is a good question, right? We always want to know why. And, you know, oftentimes we can't know for certain these things. Like, why is it genetic? Like, we know why it's genetic in terms of from a physical standpoint. We know that it ha has to do with multiple genes that um, are coded at different times that lead to these impacts. Um, so we know that from, like, a very physical, scientific level. We, we are aware of that. But, like, why in terms of a philosophical level or in terms of like an uh i would say like a sociological level why does this happen and one of the big arguments um uh for why this could be the case is because um we have within our species a variety of different personalities that approach the world differently because this is the most optimal way for a species to survive you have individuals who approach um, new things as being novel and exciting and so they're going to be more likely to try out new foods explore different sorts of resources you know do the things that would push a culture or a species or a society further um, in terms of its ability to um, uh, live well and prosper and know where all of the opportunities are right you need someone to try the new foods or explore the new areas or whatever in order to be able to push forward Additionally, and equally as important, are those who are cautious around new things, so they're less likely to be harmed by them, more likely to avoid the potential dangers, and so in those instances where something is incredibly dangerous, you need these individuals who are more standoffish in order to essentially be sure to perpetuate your species um, in the event that something is highly dangerous um, or, you know, poisonous, whatever. So... From this evolutionary psychology standpoint, from this, you know, sort of simple view of how these things could work, um, scientists have a, a, an understanding that this could very well be a reason for why personalities are genetically derived. If your parents were successful or their ancestors were successful in navigating life and the world and they were more neurotic, it makes sense for their genes to pass on the neuroticism that will protect them right? The not being as open to new experience, well, that's because perhaps genetically it was more advantageous for wherever their ancestors grew up to be a little more neurotic. Um, and when we say ancestors, I'm talking genetic ancestors. I'm talking over millions of years ancestors. Um, so having this spread within our species of different approaches and different um, uh, views 
uh, or not views, but like literal t uh, approaches to the world and understandings of the world and how you respond to new and novel things. Um, our species has this wide ability um, to uh, explore things, but also protect itself. Um, and so clearly both are advantageous because both approaches and everything in between have survived until this point. And so it's clear that, you know, our species benefits from having these different um, personality types. If we didn't benefit from it, then those genes would have, wouldn't have passed on. You know, it's kind of like the basis of evolution. So we're about, we're about to end our episode here soon, y'all. But ultimately, you know, what do y'all think about that? The genetics of personality. I find it fascinating. You know, we like to think that we are wholly different from our parents, that our environment is everything that influences us. Um, when it comes to, like, my training, my, my um, research and whatnot, we had what we called a contextual view of um, human development, which is that it's both based on the context it, like the environment around you, or it's based on the um, genetics. That's why it's contextual. It's just like, oh, well, what's the context of what we're studying? Is it uh, an environmental impact? Or is it the context of environment? Or is it the context of genetics? Um, and so with this in mind, you know, it's both, right? There are aspects of your personality that will also be cultivated and your level of openness or of neuroticism or of agreeableness or conscientiousness or extroversion is going to vary from your parents because of those environmental factors. So just because there's this genetic component, there's the temperament, everything else, there's also coping mechanisms, there's learning, there's trauma, there's all kinds of things that will influence that and either make them more prominent or more reduced um, uh, uh, types of personality traits. Uh, so it's not all genetic, but it is heavily genetically influenced. This is something that's highly supported by decades worth of research. And if you're interested in this, I would I would say go read about it. It's super interesting. I've always found it fascinating. Uh, when I took my personality class, um, man, was it interesting. I ended up doing a project on um, uh, reading about birth order. And so is there a difference between firstborns versus um, only children versus youngest kids versus middle uh, kids? And, you know, there's some variation there as well. There's some support for some differences that are consistent across um, uh, different families and genetics and whatnot. And also there's some support that like, oh, no, that's more of something that people just sort of imply um, or infer rather. Um, if I were to talk about that in the future, I would need to go and read reread a whole bunch of stuff so i'm not prepared to do that for next time so you know i if you ask for it i might not be able to do it but um but yeah hopefully this discussion on personality was interesting to y'all again um when we're talking about personality there's all different kinds of personality tests myers-briggs i find interesting i think it can tell you a lot about yourself it can help you to make decisions about um how you want to change things in your life or how you want to kind of make some decisions or whatever um but when it comes to predictability about what's going to tell you, how is someone going to do in their job? How are they going to do in social situations? How are they going to do um, in certain um, home contexts and environments and everything like that? Um, that stuff, the, the ocean, the big five gives us the most um, predictability. So that's why in, on the scientific side, we will use big five because it's the one that's the best um, for predictability, it's the most valid, it's the most reliable. Um, that's not to say that other personality tests aren't also useful. They're just more useful on a personal level, not on a uh, predictability level. Um, so, all right, hopefully that covers it for y'all. Um, there's a lot more that could be discussed when it comes to personality, less focused on the genetic side, but more focused on what the traits are, how they manifest themselves, and also what they predict in the future. Um, we could talk about that. We could also talk about a whole bunch of other things. I might switch back over to something having to do with sensation and perception, because I, I do love that. But um, you know, this will probably be where I end my recording session today, and uh, it'll be where I end my discussion of personality for now. So. With that ramble over, y'all, I hope you found this enjoyable. If you did, of course, leave a like, leave a comment down below. Any comment helps. Leave your comments down below on what you would like me to talk about over the next couple of episodes in terms of psychology. I do read the comments. I go through. I'm looking at them all. I'm making a list of all the things you want to hear me talk about. Um, so, uh, yeah, keep them coming. Uh, and, you know, I'll get to the ones that I can when I can. Um, 
yeah, y'all. So that's uh, that's gonna be that. With that, I hope you uh, most importantly have a wonderful rest of your day. I have been Price, and I will see y'all next time.